we are going to join together now in a song that just makes my heart swell and burst all over the place. It's called Open the Eyes of My Heart, Lord.
that our soul and spirit is in. You know, it could be, an argument could be made but that all wars of the flesh are human, of humans, that humans start, really evolve from an evilness that's in people's minds. Slavery. Uh, Nazi. Germany. I mean, everybody knows how messed up Hitler was in his thinking. And there's other people that that come to mind throughout history that you could say there was, a, there was a demonic thought or idea that God, they allowed, I mean, they allowed the devil to use them for their evilness. And I said, again, that argument could be made. You know, Christians, Charm's already alluded to it, are in a spiritual war. You may know that, you may not know that, but we are. We're in a spiritual war. And we need to use uh, the, the, the title, the weapons of our warfare. You know, Paul tells us a lot about spiritual warfare. How to recognize it and how to fight it. There must be something there because Paul writes extensively. I'm going to read you just a couple of the main ones. He writes extensively, I say, about that. But you don't hear that much about it. And I think as Christians, we need to go, we need to be aware of this, and we need to use the weapons, which you'll get more of next week, about this. Let's look at uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 and 4. Excuse me. Yeah. 10, 3 and 4. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. Read that one more time. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh. No guns, knives, but divinely powerful for the destruction of fortresses. Again, Paul says, even though we, we are flesh, we do not war in the flesh. Spiritual warfare. We do spiritual warfare with divinely powerful weapons for the breaking down of fortresses. This translation I use says for, uh, fortresses. Some translation, I like that, this, this word better, strongholds. And I will use strongholds in this. I will refer to it because it, it works both ways. You know, Paul's talking about weapons we can use to drive away demonic opposition. Strongholds are demonic. Opposition to the gospel. And those that practice the gospel. The devil does not want us to use the weapons to break these strongholds. There are strongholds in us that we allow to happen. That will be like part three, probably. Crucify the flesh. That will probably be part three. Crucify. I don't know if I like to do that or not. I don't know if I want to crucify. Do I need to crucify my flesh? Yes, I do. Do I want to do it? No, I don't. And that will be the crux of that message, probably part three of this. 
weapons to break these strongholds, these fortresses. You know, we do have an enemy. We do have an enemy. And it's the devil. Satan. Lucifer. <coughs> Wanting to cause problems for Christians. It's not, gosh, and I say this over and over to myself, and to, to, it's not, oh, bloody dog, gosh, you, oh, yeah. I'm going to heaven. I got it made. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's true. But the devil hounds me. He hounds me all the time. Am I alone in that? No. And sometimes it's like it, it's, it's been hounding me, hounding me, hounding me, and then I talk to somebody, what, you know, Hobie, I was talking to him about it, and he says, well, that sounded like a satanic attack to me. And I said, yeah, it is. Duh. I'm not alone in this, am I? I've already asked you. Does the devil hound you? Does he bother you? I'm not talking about physical ailments, per se. I'm talking about attacks us personally within our family and all that kind of stuff. I know this is not a comfortable subject, but it's something we need to know. We need to understand but we have weapons at our disposal. We need to start using them. Amen. And it can be as simple in the name of Jesus. Be gone from me and my family. It can be as simple as that. Does it mean it's always going to work every time? No. In Ephesians, chapter 6, verses 10 through 12, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of His might. Put on the full armor of God that you may be able to stand firm against the schemes of the devil. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this darkness, and against the spiritual forces of wickedness in heavenly places. Now we'll look at the armor a little closer next week. If you've been in a church anywhere, anytime, with a preacher worth his salt, you're going to hear about the armor of God. It's something we need. We, we did it in Bible. We've done it in Bible school numerous times. It's something we need to understand. Stand firm against the devil and use your weapons of warfare. I mean, Paul, again, we'll talk about that next week. Paul goes in explicitly and says, defensive weapons are not offensive weapons. Most of them are defensive. But there are offensive weapons also that we use. Our battle is against the forces of darkness and wickedness in heavenly places. I have to think about that in just a little bit. It takes a little bit of an interpretation. If you go read commentary, you're probably going to get commentary all over the place. If it's a conservative, charismatic kind of, of, of commentary, it's going to really go heavily into this. And if it's more liberal, it's not, you know, that, that really don't apply anymore. You know, I, I, don't, I don't know. But forces of the darkness, I think we understand that. And it's the unseen world of demons. And 
Demons are real. Why in the world would Paul write so much about this? Why would Jesus cast out so many demons from people? It has to be real. It has to be. It, they had just gone away. Have they? Huh? I think they're more subtle. You know, you go to, to Africa. Man, these folks, the folks in Africa tell you, this, this is real. I mean, they, they do spiritual war. I mean, there's witch doctors. And, and, I, and, and I remember a lady that came to church from, uh, gosh, years ago, where Renee might have remembered her, a Haitian lady from, you know, from Haiti, obviously. Uh, her son went to church with us, and, and I remember talking to her. Man, a strong woman of God. I remember talking to her about voodoo in Haiti. She said, voodoo ain't got nothing. She said, yeah, it's there, but it ain't got nothing on me. Because I got the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, that voodoo going to leave me and my family alone. Amen. You remember her, Angela? I forgot her name. Man, she was a strong woman of God. Demonic forces are real and they're active. Wickedness in heavenly places. That was uh, our high places, heavenly places, high places. And this is my interpretation of that. It may be <coughs> open interpretation just a little bit. It's people that want to disrupt the church. Now, I'm not talking about bickering about what to do to fix something, what color it should be. I'm not talking about that. If, if you disagree with the carpet color or the paint or whatever, that's not demonic. That's just a personal opinion. It's a personal opinion. But people want to disrupt the church. They're generally not in the church. Sometimes they will be. Sometimes they will get in here. But it comes pretty obvious that one thing, praise God for a spirit-filled church like this and the discernment of spirits, we can pick up on that pretty well. But people that want to Water down the gospel. And, and I, I was just reading something this morning going on in the denomination that we used to be part of and it, talking about people trying to water down the gospel. Oh, Jesus ain't the only way. Jesus didn't really rise from the dead. You know, uh, you know the Bible is, you, you know, it's a multiple choice kind of thing. You know, trying to water the gospel. You know, we left all that, thanks God. Try to water down the gospel of Jesus Christ. Oh, you can live your life like you want. No, there's things that we need to try to do, and I'm not coming down on anybody or anything like that. But you know, there's, 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 there's. I try to live a holy life. But I'm not always successful in it. I try. I try to walk with God. And it, it's just it's heartbreaking when you hear these situations. When Angela told me, she said, I got some, some bad news to tell you and, and about Matthew's death. And then on top of that, one of her good friend's husband, who was older, had a heart attack. You know, <coughs> as we say, killed over. That's the world we live in. And on top of that, we have to contend with these demonic forces. You know, people we might know that are being used by the devil unknowingly. Oh, I'm just going to let the devil use me to corrupt a situation. 
I had a conversation with somebody a few weeks ago. I said, that's just evil. It's demonic. The devil will use these people to try to carry out his schemes against us and the church. But it should go without saying. Our first and foremost weapon of our warfare is not the armor of God. It's Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the first and foremost weapon of our warfare. In other words, born again believers in Christ, Christ have access to this awesome power. We have access, and, and sometimes we forget that. We forget it. I forget it. Or I take it for granted. Shame on me when it happens, but sometimes it happens. And I'm not one of those that's going around. There's devil over here, devil over there. You know, I'm not necessarily doing that. But then he'll sneak up on you. When you least expect it. And you say, I wonder, you say why does that happen? Well, it's the devil. Duh. In the name of Jesus, be gone from me, devil. Be gone from me. Be gone from my family. You be gone from the situations. It, it, could be, it could be you personally. It could be in a business. It could be anything like that. Again, good old Paul here. Ephesians, they must have had some spiritual warfare issues for sure because I'm going to go back to the end what we talked about earlier it was in chapter 6. Now we're going to go back to the beginning and to his opening in chapter 1. Chapter 1, verses 18 through 23. And this is a prayer because Paul starts it out and says, I pray that the eyes of your heart I guess you read the scriptures, didn't you? <laughs> now it just hit me. You know, I do send this out to people that prepare, help prepare the service. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be open or enlightened so that you may know the hope of His calling. What are the riches of the glory of His inheritance in the saints? By saints being us. And what is the surpassing greatness of His power toward us who believe? These are in accordance with the workings of the strength of His might, which He brought about in Christ when He raised Him from the dead and seated Him at the right hand in heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the ages to come. He put, and he put all things in subjection under his feet and gave him as head over all to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Whew. Paul's encouraging us, telling us, to know the surpassing greatness. You catch the adjectives that Paul uses to describe strength and might over and over. It's hard to miss that. The greatness of his power and the strength of his might. His power and his strength and his might. How, how much more can you describe it? It must be great. It must be awesome for Paul to use that over and over and describe that. God put Christ above all rules. Ages to come, past, ages to come. Jesus Christ is above it all. With authority, power, and dominion. Even demonic forces. Even demonic forces. All things. All things are in subjection 
to Him. All things. I even put it in all caps in my notes here. All things. What does all mean? Everything. Everything that is, exists. Christ is the authority over it. And again, that includes demonic forces. <clears throat> he is the ultimate weapon of our warfare. Don't let the devil push you around. Sometimes we have to talk to the devil in the name of Jesus. Amen. Oh, it's the blame here. Leave me alone. <laughs> I'm coming to you. I'm talking to you by the authority of Jesus Christ. Leave me alone. Leave my family alone. That's, not, that's sweet, short and sweet. Or short and not sweet. Short to the point. Don't let him push you around. Let him know that you're a child of God. He knows it. But you sometimes you might have to remind him, I'm a child of God. I'm a child of God. I'm a child of God through Jesus Christ. And you have no place in me, in my family, in my church. And the church universal. You have no place. Leave me alone. Amen.